Good morning, friends. This is July the 27th, a Saturday. This last week, I was working hard on a new course, a pilot test for me, of a summer school format where I'm the teleteacher. I show up from a different time zone, potentially. In this case, I was showing up in a college campus, and my students were middle school aged. Then after finishing the final class yesterday, um, I went out to the airport. This is from the day before, but um, I'm going to end up at the airport, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of a traveler story, and I'm going to explain in this short video what the link I see, what link I see between synergetics and more psychological, esoteric writings, readings that we might want to connect to it. I've mentioned Love's Body in the past to limber up your reading skills to where you do have the metaphorical lens where you can collapse analogies, you can see analogies, you can, by collapse I mean you can connect dots between unrelated things based on analogy, somewhat unrelated, okay? In the humanities, we're trained to read this way. We have to have a metaphorical mindset if we're going to read certain types of literature. And I'm saying synergetics is one of those types of literature. You can read it for physics, and you can find physics in it, but you also need to be able to read it for psychology and find psychology in it. This is kind of what Applewhite was attracted by in synergetics. We talked about it some, the pronouns that he got there in the index are an indication of his focus. There's a lot of, you could say, mind dynamics or something going on with synergetics. And I'm moving forward from El Mercado here, Funny Dog, to the book cover of this Maurice Nicole four-volume set that I got like a dollar a piece. And I don't know why it says this is the end of the slideshow. Wait a minute, let's go back. So I took this to the airport. It's what I'm talking about is this particular book. And okay, there's the slideshow going forward. I'm on the max. I also took this uh, like Quaker propaganda, I guess you could call it, Addicted to War. It's kind of old by now. But I like to get that out, and so, hey, I'm going to the airport. Maybe I can just give it to somebody, or I don't know what I'm going to do with it at this point was what I was thinking. So I was just taking it with me. I didn't really look at it at the time, but I had it with me. And what I wanted to say, though, is I think the Gurdjieff Ospensky stuff is connected historically in the following manner, that when Fuller Bucky, author of Synergetics, came out with a 4D time lock much earlier, which was early based on, you know, let's get the shelters thing going, let's solve homelessness. He wanted to solve hunger later as part of it, right? So he joined the Hunger Project board. But he's always into, if we can solve, basically it comes as a package. If your people are sheltered, they're no doubt living at least a life of a global university student. Like that's that's kind of our 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 um our base, right? So I was seeing off Lee Lawa at the PDX. Here she is holding the Gurdjieff book or it's a Spensky, whatever. Anyway, Fuller wanted to be sure Spensky was on the short list of people to get his 4D time lock. So you need to understand the importance of this Spensky character, I think in order to partly get where Fuller's head was at and where everybody's head was at who was trying hard in that time and let's just say well we could go to different times here um, the, the books I'm reading were still kind of in the middle of World War II in a way and what these writers and people engaged in the so-called work are trying to help people do is disidentify with a lot of their uh, rackets, as we say today, where, you know, I'm a citizen of this or a member of that religion, you're very identified with your identity. And loosening up that, and it's a long story, I don't want to give the whole teaching because, you know, there's a lot to it, and I'm not 
saying that I'm the super master of it either. There's me wearing my keep coding weird shirt. This is my first day I wore this. I didn't even know what it was going to say. It was in my bag from OzCon. It's the one shirt I picked up. So Leela and I had about an hour, a little more, and then I really encouraged her to get through the gate. She was very groggy, hadn't had much sleep. I saw her through TSA, and then I went home on the Max, and I got, uh, well, my phone died, and I was asleep soon thereafter, having pretty had a pretty exhausting week, a good week with the teaching and all that, but um, my phone had lost its charge, so only this morning did I find out that she actually managed to miss that plane, even though she was there quite a bit ahead of time, and the reason was... She was A, very groggy, and so why is it asking to close all these tabs? But they changed the gate on her, so she's sitting at the wrong gate to go to San Francisco and didn't realize it, but by the time she figured out that this was not her flight, the gate she was at, it was too late. She'd missed the flight to San Francisco. See, I don't want to close anything. This is like a bug, I would say, in something here. I'm just trying to get through these pictures, a great browser. So I already knew though, because I read the two text messages before I heard her voicemail, that she had managed to make the flight anyway on the next um, you know, connection. They got her on the next flight to San Francisco and she did manage to make her connection to the on the Chinese uh, airline that's taking her to, she's going to Kathmandu. This is her her lifestyle as a student of Vajrayana. Could get in more detail. I think I have in other videos. But basically, Tantric Buddhism as, as taught in an esoteric manner by a Nepalese subculture that is kind of dying out and needs students if it's going to survive. And uh, they wouldn't have taken females at all, probably, in the early days. But this is a new chapter. So that's my story. The main takeaway is synergetics is a psychological work. And it's in the tradition, even, of the fourth way and so forth, in that it, too, puts a lot of emphasis on reflex conditioning, robotic nature of man. The brain is associated with that. And the mind is associated with escaping from that and being more upgradable. If you want to be the kind of person that can uh, stay flexible and not get locked into an identity or multiple identities, then you want to study these things like the work by Maurice Nicole. What does he mean by that? And it's very like asked, as I said, um, I talked about the forum a little bit, not having gone through it, through it but um, Glenn did recently, so that's been interesting. Um, psychological, and, and don't be afraid of that is what I'm saying. Just because some work is psychological doesn't mean you can't goldmine it for really hardcore STEM concepts as well, because those are in there, right? Synergetics has a lot to offer on the engineering architecture side, but I think the physics math people are too eager to dismiss it as not theirs. And then I'm saying, yeah, but it's not theirs to dismiss either. It's like if it were a STEM work and you're a STEM professional and you look at synergetics and you go, this is, this is garbage, I'd listen because that's a STEM work and you're a STEM professional. But what I'm saying is synergetics is a path work. It's a philosophy, P for philosophy, anthropology, theater, history, path. And therefore, it doesn't take a STEM person to judge it. And uh, the guy who wrote Most Beautiful Molecule, I think this was his issue. He went in there thinking, I'm a STEM type journalist. I know what a good STEM work looks like. And synergetics looks like garbage to me. And he I, I wrote to him, and I'm like, hey, you got the wrong genre there. It's a philosophy book. And he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to see synergetics as in the humanities at all. And I think that's because he really hadn't done much homework on Fuller's trajectory. 
let's say starting, I'm not forgetting his Navy career or anything, but let's just say starting from Greenwich Village and meeting Noguchi and ending with Ezra Pound and cheering up the guy after a lot had gone under the bridge at that point. All right, scrolling through some of Mom's many awards, our overseas life, some shots from my uh, school experience, and back to OSCON. So that's been my trajectory through Portland. Uh, left some C60 there at OSCON, did some tutorials in Rust and um, blockchain, made videos and blogs about all that, taught a, a class for a week and then just went out to the airport to see my friend Leela who used to live in this Russia house or blue house or whatever we call it and is now off to Kathmandu. Bon voyage Lindsay. We'll talk to you soon.